When Star Wars Episode IX was released, I immediately fell in love with the look of this set. This is Kylo Ren's quarters, and is to me one of the coolest sets in all of Star Wars. The light, clean look, the subtle hints of red, and of course, those classic dark side backlit cutouts in the walls. So. I decided to build it. I started out by mocking everything up in 3D using the actual dimensions of the room I'd be building it in. I constantly referred to these images of Kylo Ren's quarters throughout the process and tried to make it fit within my setup. From there, I took a screenshot of that into Photoshop and digitally painted the room until I was happy with the look. Now keep in mind, I'm not going for an exact replica of the Star Wars set, but I wanted that same general look. I actually had the chance to go on the Rise of the Resistance ride in Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland right around this time, which was fantastic by the way if you haven't had a chance to try it. So I took a bunch of photos there for inspiration as well. Alright, so next up I'm going to cut out these uh, panels here and the easiest way to do it and the way you should all do it is just use a water jet. It just makes things easier and they're super accessible. Uh, you can pick these up on Amazon for like, what, 30 bucks? Yeah, like 300,000 something. Yeah, well, yeah. pretty close. Yeah, this is Mitchell from the Water Jet Channel and uh, helping me out getting these panels cut out. So, piece of cake. Now, is this considered cheating? Absolutely. This is an easy way to go, but obviously, most people don't have access to a water jet. So, a traditional way to accomplish these panels is to use a hole saw and a jigsaw to cut everything out. So, I was really excited to be able to use the water jet to make my life that much easier. A huge thank you to Mitchell and Dan over at the Water Jet channel for their help. With my plans and measurements in hand, as well as some of the printouts of the look I was going for, I was ready to start framing. After my very first framing piece was ready, I realized that I just didn't like how shallow it was. So what I think I'm going to do is pull this back about six inches, maybe to about there, and that makes a huge difference as far as usability in this space. From there, I kept working on the framing until it was ready to go. When I finished framing, I realized I had somehow shorted out the outlets and I had no way of knowing which of the 50 some odd screws I had just driven in might have actually caused the issue. Now luckily for me, I'm the one who actually finished the basement, so I had video of where the electrical wire was and I could deduce which screw had most likely caused the issue. And I am dorky enough to own an endoscope, okay, two endoscopes actually, which was a lifesaver because it allowed me to drill a tiny hole and find this. I had accidentally driven a 3 inch screw right through the Romex cable that provided power to several of the outlets in the basement. After taking several hours to identify and then rewire that, I was finally back on track. With my light panels cut out, I just had to figure out how to cut the rest of the panels out for the walls and the small table in front. This was largely trial and error, a lot of measuring, and several wasted pieces of half inch plywood. Now the silver lining here was that this project required pretty much every power tool I own and I love to use my power tools. It was kind of fun to have about 14 cordless power tools in the room and to be using all of them to get this figured out. Another tricky part was how to create these rounded corners for the center recess. I decided to use a technique called kerf bending which involves making a bunch of cuts most of the way through a piece of wood so that you're only bending the very thinnest outside portion. I later filled that in with wood putty and I think it came out pretty great. I then framed in all of the shelving supports and attached all of the doors using some surface mount cabinetry hinges. I went with some magnetic catches to keep all of the doors closed and that's actually worked out really well so far. I then added the actual shelves and with that the inside of the cabinets were done so I was ready to focus on the outside. I chose to use one inch thick rigid foam insulation for the decorative shapes on the outside since they're lightweight, they're easy to work with, and a whole lot cheaper than adding another several sheets of plywood. I created a little jig in my shop that uses my belt sander to add a cool looking beveled edge to all of the faces of the foam panels. I installed all of the panels using a specific foam adhesive and then I was finally ready to paint. For paint, I used a handheld paint sprayer with some watered down Bare Ultra, and the color here is a super light gray, it's called Dove. When I finished painting and removed all of the masking, I ended up with this. I was super excited. All that was left was the accent colors and the lighting. For the accents, I busted out the handy vinyl cutter and added black, gray, and red vinyl. 
And for the lighting, I tried a handful of different techniques ranging from diffuser fabric to white panels an inch behind the lights to parchment paper. I ended up just hot gluing a shower liner to the panel and then gluing the light strips in between. This is an okay solution, but I have plans for making this way better in the future. The colors can all change with the remote, which is really handy, and it is of course all connected to smart plugs so I can control everything with my voice. So after those 10 days or so of building, I got everything finished and I think it went pretty well. Come and take a look. Welcome to the new studio. Now have you seen that video where I 3D printed Stormtrooper armor and then bulletproofed it and then shot it? That's right here. Feel free to check that out. I'm Nils. Thanks for watching.